condensation in an RV can be a huge problem. I think a, a bigger problem than a lot of people might realize. You might see it on the windows or around the window frame and it might be a little bit annoying, you clean it up, but it can be very destructive and it can even be in hidden places. So today I'm gonna give you some of the best resources to fight condensation, give you some tests. You can find out exactly what is gonna work for you in your situation. And I'm gonna show you some areas that sometimes go overlooked that can cause some huge damage. You don't wanna have to do a whole ton of repairs on your RV when you can just handle the condensation before it even causes causes any damage. Let's get right into it. So battling against condensation, you really have to attack it on multi different levels. You can't just buy one device and think that it's going to be a miracle pill to be able to solve everything that's going to be happening inside your RV for condensation. These are definitely a very useful tool and I put four of these head to head to see how they, they do. But there are things that we can do to help minimize condensation inside the RV from the get go. No sense trying to fight an uphill battle, trying to make this do all the work when we can give it a much better start starting point and make this much more effective inside of the RV because what you have for condensation is inside the RV when you're using it, it's going to be warmer. You're going to be using it. You're going to be taking showers. You're going to be making meals. You're going to be breathing in the inside of your RV and all that is adding moisture to the warm air inside and the warm air can hold more moisture than cold air. And so when that comes up against the window or the windsill or a not well insulated area, you're going to get that water buildup, that condensation, and then it can cause damage. So how do we minimize it without even starting off with this? Well, first off, we can start with some of those heavy hitters. So when you're taking a shower, always use that vent and turn on the fan on the inside when you're taking that shower. Get that humidity and that moisture out. Don't let it spread to the entire RV. I took a shower with having the fan on and you can see that the graph hardly had anything on there. And then I took one with leaving the vent closed and not turning on the fan and you can just see a massive spike on the inside of the RV. So much moisture coming in here. So you cannot underestimate that. Turn on the fan, get that moisture out. And the same thing goes for when you're cooking. If you need to open up a vent. Even if you don't turn on the fan in a situation like that, you crack open a vent and you get some of that moisture out as you're cooking, that moisture is going to leave the RV. And the third tip in here is don't leave standing water around. So if you have standing water in your shower, go ahead and wipe that up with a rag and bring it up and so it goes down the drain. Get that rag out of the RV because it's what's gonna happen. The warm air inside is gonna make the water in there evaporate, then it goes right back into the air. So you want no standing water. You don't want to be trying to dry things out inside the RV, adding that humidity inside. So those are three main practices that we do inside our RV. And then we introduce something like this. So I wanted to see how much this would take out in a single night inside the RV. So we ran it all night, emptied out into a cup. And it was about an eighth of a cup, not even a, a quarter of a cup. But this running all night, that's, that's what this was able to pull out of the air in just your typical RV. Now I'm going to get to some other tests where we talk about temperature temperatures and humidity levels and see how much it actually pulls out. But I wanted to see in a similar situation using a much larger dehumidifier, how much water that would take out in a night if I ran it all night in the same conditions. That's where we come to this guy. I'll give you some details of why I think this is the better one if you're going with the large one for RVing. But this guy pulled one and three quarter cups out of the air in one night. That's like 14 times more than this little guy. I'd have to get 14 of these guys working to be able to complete what this did in one night. Now there's more to the story that the other tests are going to reveal, but that is a large amount of water, one and three quarter cup in one night. So let's get right to the test because we test the small versus the large versus the built-in dehumidifier inside of our AC unit and against damp rid to see how it did in a more controlled environment. So I did the test here in the project trailer. This is a 25 foot trailer and I wanted to keep the temperature and the humidity level across the board the same for testing all four of these. So the way that we set it up, we brought it up to 65 degrees and we had the humidity. I brought it up to 70%. That way it kind of showed everything being closed up. You were cooking, you were doing a shower and the humidity got out of control inside the RV. So let me try and give you about two days worth of test in about 90 seconds. Let's start with the small one. So once I had the temperature and the humidity at that level, I ran it for two hours and it pulled 70 watt hours for power. And the humidity came down here to 60.2%. 
Now the water that it pulled isn't really measurable, but you can see that it did pull out water in those first two hours. And I should note that this is the lightest weighting dehumidifier coming in at 3.24 pounds. Now that brings us to our larger unit and it pulled 402 watt hours for the two hours. And it brought it down to 51% humidity inside here. And in those two hours, it accumulated a whopping three and a quarter cups of water. It was a massive amount of water. It, it was quite impressive. This one comes weighing in at over 37 pounds. The AC here has a dehumidifying mode, and so I wanted to try that out to see how well it did. And over the two hours, it pulled the 420 watt hours also, and it brought the humidity down to 58%. The percentage is what we have to go off of because it doesn't have any collection system to know how much water we can measure that it pulled out. And I will have to say with the AC, it wasn't really that comfortable in here. It felt like cold air. It's basically turning on the AC, trying not to change the temperature, but trying to pull moisture out. That brings us to damp rid. This is a little unfair for this. This isn't exactly how you would use damp rid, but we did it. Obviously it's not gonna pull any power and you couldn't really measure how much water it brought in. But looking at the graph at the end, the humidity was still up in the high 60%. I did leave the damp rid in here for 24 hours and it did pick up two ounces of water. Now, the clear winner was the large unit here. And the reason why I like this one and I think it's good for RVing, it stores well. The bucket that it collects the water in is what it also nests in. So when you're putting it in storage, it's decently compact. It's not a huge item. And it also doesn't have wheels on the bottom. It has an easy handle to be able to carry it around. And it's not gonna be rolling around when you have it in storage when you're traveling down the road. If you didn't wanna collect the water in the bucket, Bucket and you wanted to have it go straight down the drain, you can actually set it up that way as well. It has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities, so that way you can set it with your phone, you can change the settings in there. You can even tell it the percentage that you want it to be at in there. That was my wife's one complaint when I did the RV test. I ran it all night. I wanted to see just how much water it could pull out of the RV. And she said it was just too dry. You could feel just how dry it was in there. But Normal use, you wouldn't have to use it like that. You set the percentage that you want the humidity to be at inside the RV, and then it will hold it there. It'll turn on and off as it needs to to do it. And it'll also give you alerts. to let you know when you need to clean the filters inside. It'll let you need to know when you need to empty the bucket. It is a very handy unit. A lot of features packed into it to make it what it is. It's obviously most expensive on the list, but it has a lot of features packed into it and extremely effective. It comes in as number one, you could get multiple of the smaller ones and use them inside the RV, but just be realistic on what the effectiveness is going to be. It will pull some moisture out of the air, but it will never hold up to what the larger guy can do. My recommendation for using damp rid is, is mainly using it for storage. That's what it should be used for. If you needed it off grid, it can come in and give you a little bit of help, but it's not going to do a miracle. But in storage, that's kind of what it's for. As effective as it is, there are still things that we need to do and pay attention to inside the RV to not let condensation ruin it. Now there's few things that RVers on social media love more than command strips and reflect decks. And so this is something that we use in extreme conditions. When you're going to Alaska, you need to block out the sun, you use reflect decks. If you're in extreme heat, we will also use reflect decks. Extreme cold, you guessed it, Re reflect decks. But we only use this when it's gonna be getting down below 20 degrees because while this can be very effective, you can see it using a thermal gun, putting it on just this one window, you can see that it's much warmer. We're not losing as much heat through the window when we use the Reflectex on there. But this actually can cause more of a problem with condensation when you use it in cold temperatures because this is still going to trap some of that moisture in there. You're still gonna get that condensation built up behind it. We've had it to where we, you take this off on the inside of that window is just covered in ice because the condensation built up on there got so cold that then it froze on there. So. If you're going to use this in extreme temperatures, my advice would be to monitor it. Make sure that you're not building up that condensation behind there, creating mold in a wet environment that could cause destruction. You can use this to stay a little bit warmer, but keep an eye on it. Don't create a bigger problem, which is another tip because we had this stored behind our couch when we weren't using it and it was cold outside. It was getting down below freezing 
And what was happening is this was creating multiple layers of insulation behind the couch and it was collecting a lot of condensation. So when I reached for something behind the couch, I realized the carpet was wet back there because that wall had built up condensation, the different layers of this had built up condensation, and it was just all sitting back there. It had no air movement behind our couch in order to get out. So that is a great tip. If you have a couch that's sitting against an exterior wall or anything that's similar to a couch sitting against a wall, you want air movement behind it. So if you're getting condensation on the inside of your RV, I don't know why I'm still holding this. What you'd wanna do is you wanna get some air movement behind that, get a fan behind there, a USB fan. I'm gonna put links down in the description to everything that we're talking about today, but get a fan back there that can move some air. That is gonna be the biggest help that you can have back there is have some air movement so that that moisture isn't just going to sit back there. That air movement is another arsenal that you have in this fight against condensation. The same thing goes for the area underneath your bed or even underneath the mattress of your bed. You can even get a mattress pad that goes underneath there that allows air to flow underneath your, your mattress because it doesn't have slats. It's usually sitting on a plywood. There's no air movement there. So getting a mat underneath your mattress will allow that air to be able to get under there and you won't have that condensation mold build up underneath there. The one thing that I did miss when I was talking about the Reflectex and the windows is you can put a window covering on your windows. So we have a film on there. I am not a huge fan of the film, but using a thermometer, you can see that this window is sitting at around 62.4 degrees and the window with no treatment is sitting at 57.3. Now, this isn't quite as effective at keeping it warmer in here as the Reflectex, but it does make a, a little bit of a difference, kind of creates that extra storm window type of a thing with, with just some window film. Now, another key thing is choosing a heat source that doesn't add moisture to the inside of the RV. So choosing a heat source like a a heat pump or an electric fireplace or even the propane furnace on your RV. Yes, propane, when it burns, it does produce moisture, but it has a heat exchanger and it has an exhaust. So none of that propane, none of that moisture is making it to the inside of your RV. It's getting exhausted out. So that is a dry heat source for inside of the RV. But if you were to use like a Mr. Buddy or something like that, it's going to produce moisture on the inside of the RV. So choose a heat source that is not going to add moisture. So there's a lot of actionable steps that we can take here. Using that vent and turning it on when we're taking a shower. Cracking a vent open when you're cooking. Don't have any stand water waiting to evaporate into the air. Look for those problem areas like behind a couch or where you might not have any air movement and get the air moving in that area. Don't use a heat source that's gonna add moisture into the air and then you can use a dehumidifier to get rid of the excess moisture that you have on the inside of the RV. You take these proactive steps and you won't have any damage from condensation on the inside and you won't have to be fighting those problems in the long run. If you found this video helpful, we have other videos on using your RV in the cold weather and tips to go along with that. You, you might find that interesting. So as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video. Take care. still holding the reflectix.